I am Chronicler Mindek. I chronicle the historical events of the Romulan Star Empire. As outlined in the previous chapter, the Romulans rose to power in the Beta Quadrant of the galaxy. Within 75 years, we had conquered and colonized a big portion of space and became one of the dominant powers in the Beta and Alpha Quadrants. But by the Earth year 2212, the Alpha and Beta Quadrants were in a state of controlled chaos, since the young and foolhardy United Earth Alliance decided that they could try to conquer the Sharonites. The Vulcans were also dragged into a conflict, where the Orions and the Klingons, sensing the dogma and hypocrisy of the Terrans and Vulcans, decided to come to the Sharonites' aid. We were amused, but decided not to involve ourselves and continue to consolidate in Grand Territory. One thing that worried us was when the Cardassians decided to declare war against the Vulcans, which also dragged the Terrans into the war. Now the Terrans and Vulcans were involved in a war with the Orions Klingons, with the Orions and Klingons on one front, and the Cardassians on the other. There was debate about intervening to keep the Cardassian juggernaut away from our borders, but instead we decided to wait and see. As the United Earth Alliance, the Vulcans, the Tellarites, and the Andorians would make a nice buffer between us and the Cardassians, we would let them all cut their teeth on each other. There were other threats towards the rim of the galaxy, into our galactic east were the Husnok, a mysterious enigmatic race. Their fleets were at least as strong as the Cardassians. Curiously, they let us explore their territory and get a good look at their ships. We had also previously waged a war against the Flaxians to liberate them rather than occupy them. However, they were taking far too long to repay us the gratitude of our protection and integration in into our empire. We maintained cordial relations with the Tellarites and the Andorians so that they would buffer our territory against the Cardassian juggernaut, but their military seemed disappointingly weak. Later we managed to negotiate a sensor link agreement with the Orions which gave us a view of their fleet along with the Klingons, also relatively weak, but overpowering when combined with the Cardassian fleet on the other front undoubtedly chewing on the United Earth Alliance tail. They were forced to negotiate a peace treaty and were never able to take the Sharonite world. When the war ended, the Sharonites immediately asked us for protection they would be our vassals. We accepted immediately, with great amusement. This greatly upset the humans, who officially declared us their rivals. The Orions seemed to have recovered quickly from their war with the humans. It seemed that they would build large ships, whereas the Romulan Empire focused on smaller ships. It looked as if the Cardassian threat would be delayed, so we then focused on our conquest of Zakdorn. We were able to take the Zakdorn homeworld and continue our march towards the Galactic East and the Delta Quadrant. Another look at the Cardassians indicated that they may actually be losing the war with the Vulcans and humans. This indicated that perhaps the Vulcans and humans were coordinating and their combined fleet must have overwhelmed the Cardassians. Perhaps they would become the new biggest threat, along with the Husnok, in this part of the galaxy. Decisions needed to be made about where our empire would expand next. We needed to take the Flaxians. Perhaps we could just simply go to war with them, but their independence was guaranteed by the powerful Husnok. This was no longer tenable for conquest. We would have to wait and see if they would join our empire. However, the Klingons were looking increasingly ripe for conquest. They have no friends or allies. Their military is laughingly small. Strange for a warrior species. Perhaps they would make excellent prey for our predatory empire. 
Perhaps we could outstretch our wings and unsheath our talons while we fly towards the rim of the galaxy.